Imagine taking your muscles and squeezing the living hell out of them. That's exactly what smooth muscles do. All right, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over the smooth muscle contraction cycle. Before we begin, I would like to say thank you so much for 110 subscribers. That means so much to me. You know, over this past two and a half months, I've gotten 11,000 views. That is incredible. And hopefully we keep on growing. And if you have not subscribed, please do. And uh, this tells me that people are liking my content and we can keep going. All right, so first, what is smooth muscles? Smooth muscles is basically any muscle that you cannot voluntarily contract. For example, muscles of the digestive system, your stomach or intestines. You cannot voluntarily contract them, they just do it. Especially your respiratory system or your reproductive system, you can't tell them when to contract. They just do it. Smooth muscles have no striations, aka no sarcomeres. Thank God. So no H zone, no Z line, no I band, none of that. Uh-uh. None of that. So it's easy. So how do they contract? Well, see, the thing is that the myosin heads are actually along are located along the entire length of the myosin filament, unlike skeletal muscles. This causes Myosin heads to pull actin further, so it actually creates this web-like structure around the smooth muscles. It's a 3D structure, and when contracted, it basically strangles the living hell out of them. That's exactly what smooth muscles do. So I must say this beforehand, is this actually confuses a lot of students. They're like, wait, 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 wait. I thought we just did this. We did skeletal muscle. I mean, we did muscle contraction cycle. This is for smooth muscle. There's a big difference. There's skeletal muscle, which is muscles like your bicep, your back, your legs, your neck, whatever stuff you can contract willingly. Smooth muscles, you cannot. You cannot tell them when to contract. So these think about your internal organs. This is what you're contracting here. This is what we're talking about. So let's do step one. Step one, calcium must enter the muscle cell so how do we do that? So, well, the calcium channels are open into the muscle cell, so calcium floods in. In addition, we had the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Remember in this, during the skeletal muscle lecture, we said the SR, sarcoplasmic reticulum, is basically like a calcium storage center. And it's gated by something called a renodine receptor, which is this blue thing here. It's like a gate that opens and closes. When it's open, calcium can go out and go into the muscle cell. The, sarco the sarcoplasm. This is a little different. So there's no DHP receptors here like skeletal muscles. So renadine receptors, how do they open up? Renadine receptors in the smooth muscle can actually open with stretch. So let's think about this. Think about when food enters your stomach. Food stretches the smooth muscles of your stomach. Your stomach is a smooth muscle. And when food stretches your stomach, it's technically stretching and opens the renidine receptor so calcium can initiate a contraction. This is exactly how when you eat something and it goes into your stomach, your stomach starts contracting. Step two. So there's a little bit difference here. In skeletal muscles, do you remember we said that calcium basically sprinkles on onto troponin and then pushes tropomyosin away? There's a little bit, you know, there's an initial steps you must do beforehand. The first thing is, is that calcium must bind to something called calmodulin, sorry, or abbreviated as CAM. So calcium binds to something called calmodulin, and they're bonded, essentially. Aww. So they're couples, they're star-crossed lovers, they're whatever, husband and wife, I don't care. They're bonded. Now this complex we just created, this calcium comodulin complex, is now able to activate an enzyme called myosin light chain kinase, or MLCK. So this enzyme, MLCK, is started as inactive. It doesn't do anything. But when calcium and calmodulin come together, it basically can activate this enzyme called MLCK. It's now activated. Now, what happens now is that MLCK is now able to phosphorylate these myosin heads, which activates them. 
So what's happening here is that we are started with this mouse and head. And there's nothing on it. It's just the mouse and head. So it's not doing anything special. It's just sitting there being lazy. MLCK comes along and tells basically ATP, a nearby ATP, hey, there's a mouse and head here that's doing absolutely nothing. It's wasting its life. Do something. So the ATP comes along and it gives itself, gives the mouse and head, you know, a, a phosphate group and an ADP, which activates it. It gives the mouse and head energy to do stuff. So just a little recap here is MLCK, which is now activated, tells ATP to come along and do something. It signals ATP to come along. Ring it, it basically shows where the mouse and head is to the ATP. Helps it, guides it essentially. Now, here's where it gets a little bit finicky. Not finicky. A little bit complicated. Not really, but we'll see. Remember the calcium calmodulin complex we made back in step two? Here, here. We made this. We're not going to forget about this. This is actually still useful. Even though it activated MLCK, it can actually still do stuff. It's actually going to be really important here. Do you remember in skeletal muscles, we had something called troponin and tropomyosin. And what happened is tropomyosin is blocking those binding sites on actin. So mouse and heads could not bind. And then when stimulated by calcium, troponin would push away tropomyosin, exposing those binding sites. Well, we actually have the same thing going on here, except they have different names. So troponin is called caldesmin in smooth muscles. I don't know why. They just had to make life more difficult than it has to be. They just literally changed the name from troponin to caldesmin. I really don't know why. They just had to. So what happens is the calcium calmodulin complex that we made beforehand binds to caldesmin, which is like troponin. And then the caldesmin pushes the tropomyosin away, you know, exposing the binding sites of actin. That's it. It's, it's literally the same thing, except we just renamed troponin to caldesmin. And instead of just calcium sprinkling on, it's now calcium and calmodulin that's coming along. That's it. So it exposes the binding sites, and these were the binding sites. Lastly, the mouse and heads are now able to bind on the actin and pull, causing a contraction. So just like skeletal muscles. So we're done. Yay, we did it. So a little recap here is that first, calcium enters the cell, like, you know, like usual. But now renadine receptors open with stretch and not through DHP receptors. So calcium floods into the sarcoplasm. Calcium is now able to bind to something called calmodulin, which is K or CAM, which is a protein. Calcium and calmodulin create a complex. They're bounded. They're lovers. Whatever. I mean, just, you know what? Why not? Draw a heart. That's a heart. Okay. <laughs> calmodulin, the, the calcium calmodulin complex now activates an enzyme called myosin light chain kinase, or MLCK. This inactive MLCK needs to be activated somehow. And this calcium calmodulin does it. This complex does it. Without this complex, it wouldn't do anything. MLCK would still be inactive. This MLCK basically tells an ATP molecule that's nearby, hey, we've got a mouse in head that's not doing anything. Be useful. So the ATP comes along. It breaks off its phosphates. It gives it to the you know, mouse in head. Now that's charged, ADP plus P. Now the mouse is charged with energy, so it can now bind to stuff. It can bind to the actin. But before we bind to actin, there's triple mouse in the way. So this calcium calmodulin complex binds to something called caldesmin, which is exactly like troponin. Same thing, except a different name. And this caldesmin pushes triple mouse in the way, basically says, get the F out of here. I didn't want to swear because I'd probably get demonetized, even though I'm not getting any money right now. <laughs> Anyways, it pushes tropomyosin out of the way, which exposed the binding sites. Yay! Here, here, and here. All these are binding sites. And now mouse and heads are able to bind on actin and pull, causing a contraction. So we're done. That's it. 
If you found this video helpful, please like and, like and subscribe. We are, this channel is doing amazing. I am so grateful. Thank you to everybody that's watching these videos. It really means a lot to me. And until next time, later.